Yes. Oh, see, it wasn't on. <laughs> Mike McAdam, um, coordinator of the Global Center. Um, Julie Spivak, director of the Conejo Senior Volunteer Program. Sarah Dobb, director of the Alex Fury Teen Center. And uh, Jay Dodwell, coordinator, is out there somewhere in Zoom land. Oh. We just can't see him. OK, next slide. Uh-oh, my phone's talking to me. Oh, no, it was my watch, actually. <laughs> Siri. The City of Thousand Oaks and Conejo Recreation and Park District have had a long-standing history of partnership and collaboration which has allowed us to enrich the quality of life of the teens, adults, and seniors in our community. Next slide. The Global Adult Community Center has always been and continues to be a gem in the community for our seniors. The Global Center is more than just a building for our seniors. In the community, it is a place where they can socialize and be with friends. They can continue to learn new things and have fulfilling and meaningful experiences. Next slide. It has been an unmanageable year for our community and the world. At the beginning of the pandemic, when everything shut down, we canceled all of our programs except for our senior nutrition lunch program. As COVID numbers improved, and we were given guidelines on what we could offer, we had to think outside of the box on how we could provide programs to our seniors and still keep them safe. We rose to the challenge and following the following is some of the special programs we provided outside of the many Zoom programs we have been offering all year. Next slide. Now I give you Mr. Mike. So since the tail end of January, we've been able to welcome the County of Ventura to offer a vaccine clinic at our location. And through the end of April, they've been able to give out 34,725 shots. 
that's not appointments, that's actually bottoms in seeds, shots in arms. So um, they are, they have become almost an extension of staff. Um, we love hanging out with them, joking with them. We get advice from them. We are actually the only location they have in the county where our staff is on site doing other things. So we've become a de facto phone bank for them and answering questions about vaccines more so than they can get in any other location. So as much as we are excited as opening our doors and getting our seniors back in for our regular programming, we're actually gonna miss them when they're gone. So it's kind of a double-edged sword, but we are getting a lot of shots out there and a lot of help out there. Um, and one of the next slide. Um, you can see by all the comments here on the site that a lot of people are actually tagging us on our social media. And um, so we were able to take off of their sites and tag it again through ours. Um, but, you know, vaccines complete, super easy, super fast, love the staff, everything. So people are really, really um, appreciative that we were able to provide this service um, in conjunction with having the facility and being able to partner with the county to do it. And um, I think next slide. So one thing um, that this last year has taught us is that the um, center is invaluable and that our seniors miss us based on the phone calls we get from our patrons on when are we gonna open, when are we gonna play bingo, when are we gonna come back to class? Um, so it truly is um, just a memorable thing that we get all those conversations with our seniors on a regular basis. And there really is no place like Global Center. Oh, Toto, oh, Scarecrow, there's no place like Global. There's no place like Global Center. There's no place like Global Center. There's no place like Global Center. <laughs> and I believe that brings us to Julie Spivak. <laughs> the Conejo Senior Volunteer Program was created to pro provide an opportunity for adults 55 plus to use their life experience and skills to meet local community needs. We have all had to adapt to the new realities facing us this past year and the impact it has had on our lives. During COVID, many of our volunteers have not been able to volunteer at the places near and dear to their heart, but there are those, regardless of the situation, that gave even more of their time to ensure that our seniors after. These senior volunteers delivered and served meals, created Zoom classes and seminars, prepared income taxes, kept our gardens beautiful, tutored remotely, grocery shopped for other seniors, and created handmade items needed at local agencies. We are so fortunate to have these volunteers in our community. Next slide, please. On January 13th, 2021, CSVP carried out our annual Wellness Fest drive through style. CSVP staff, advisory council volunteers, and global staff handed out 400 goodie bags filled with current wellness information from 30 local partner agencies. 400 free lunches sponsored by the Reserve of Thousand Oaks were also distributed. It was wonderful to see familiar faces and get to chat with our seniors who were thrilled to attend an event, even if inside their cars. Next slide, please. CSVP oversees the Senior Nutrition Lunch Program at the Global Center. This grant funded program through Ventura County Area Agency on Aging is for seniors 60 plus. This congregate meal program transitioned to a drive through walk up program in March of 2020. From March 13th, 2020 to April 30th, 2021, CSVP and CRPD staff have served 46,700 meals. Next slide, please. The Conejo Senior Volunteer Program's free income program is in cooperation with the IRS and is in its 31st year. Generally, there are six plus free tax programs throughout the county, but due to COVID complications, only two kept their programs open this season. We have had hundreds of calls per day and feel very fortunate that we were able to open and serve clients from all over the county. Our volunteer tax coordinators have spent hundreds of hours adopting a hybrid virtual in-person tax program this year. Beginning February 12th, CSVP began scheduling tax appointments. Clients came to two different locations at the Global Center where they would have their documents scanned to our preparers working from home. I will spare you the other 14 steps involved in this operation, 
but like to mention the time and hours our volunteer preparers gave to ensure that this important program carried on. With the IRS extension, CSVP transitioned to our in-person program on April 7th and will continue until May 14th. While following strict CDC guidelines and adjusting to many challenges and modifications, CSVP volunteers thus far have worked over 5,000 hours and prepared 1,500 free tax returns, bringing $1.2 million back to our community. Next slide, please. CSVP would like to offer an extra special thank you to the City of Thousand Oaks City Council for awarding us with the COVID relief grant. We are so grateful to be chosen for this grant along with other incredible agencies in the Conejo Valley. Since being awarded this grant in December, CSVP volunteers have handmade many items for Conejo Valley agencies. Some of these items include over 2,500 masks for Los Robles Hospital, the Autism Society, many mansions, food share, and the National Park Service blankets, pillowcases, beanies, and scarves for James Storehouse, mastectomy, pillows, and stroke aprons for Los Robles Hospital, lap blankets for Hospice of the Conejo, and blanket, baby blankets for Conejo Community Outreach. As our community agencies begin to reopen, CSVP looks forward to offering many new volunteer opportunities to our seniors. We are most excited to reopen our lunch program and boutique and bring our senior volunteers and senior patrons back to the Global Center. Next slide, please. Good evening, it's nice to see everybody. It was an exciting time. We were nearing the end of our middle school and high school league play where 30 teams were competing in basketball and volleyball. And then within a day it had to all end, the teen center was closed. But we thought what was for a short amount of time, over one year later, the building remains closed to the general public for drop-in recreation. Who knew the coronavirus pandemic would impact us so greatly? Similar to other community happenings, the teen center's regularly scheduled programs had to be modified or were just canceled. The summer and fall program sessions were slow due to strict guidelines and public apprehension. Next slide. As time went on and things did not open, we had to put our thinking caps on and figure out what we could offer to our patrons given the circumstances and strict guidelines. Popular classes were and continue to be mountain biking, girls on the run, art media, driver's ed camp, and Zoom classes that are science and technology based. Next slide. With the guidelines loosening a bit, the current spring session classes are filling up and teens are excited to be back in the building. We are currently working with the school district to offer our sixth grade teen tech day in June via Zoom and have a golf tournament for middle and high school students the end of May. Summer program rosters are looking great again, though our ever popular sport leagues, dances, and special events will not be offered until at least the fall. Next slide. So what else is happening when the pandemic hit? A long overdue project of tackling the thousandoaksteencenter.com website. It was determined that 53% of the users used a mobile platform. So it is now optimized for mobile use. It also now features an exclusive class menu, parallax scrolling effects to modernize the user experience, dynamic video-based backgrounds, and it's faster, cleaner, and easier for you to navigate. Since the new website launch, we have seen an increase by 47% for visitors. Coming up next, we will be adding page-specific QR codes. Next slide. Also during some slower days, we focused on our most popular locations of the building. That, it skipped a couple slides for some reason. There we go. Um, we focused on our most popular location of the building, the game room. An ongoing issue during normal operations was too many teens and too few video game systems. So we expanded the gaming in the west side of the room. We added four 4K smart TVs, each with their own Xbox systems, removed cabinet doors, and added lights and diamond plating. The Gaming Trust TVs were also upgraded in the middle of the room, and still to come is the next generation consoles. And I might add, Teen Center staff did all the work for those. Next slide. 
Unfortunately, the backyard renovation was put on hold from last summer and is now back in the permitting process. We are over the top thrilled to get to celebrate opening back up with the start of the renovation, hopefully this summer. The city completed the roofing project, which included replacement of the lobby skylights. We literally can see the stars now when the windows are clean. <laughs> Unfortunately though, during the roof install, some flooding in the gym occurred due to a fire sprinkler. Next slide. Lemons got turned into lemonade. The building was closed, so no one missed the gym floor being damaged. And when the public is allowed back in, we will get to reveal to them the newly sanded and painted wood floor, complete with the Teen Center logo right mid-court. Next slide. The Youth Outreach Department housed at the Teen Center has adjusted their scope of service with the Caneo Valley Unified School District to conduct Zoom groups with middle and high school students that are referred from school staff. Outreach staff also provide supervision and support for students that are struggling with school and now come to the teen center for remote learning. Next slide. The community wide donation program of bikes called Bicycles for Success has remained popular. The outreach team gets bikes donated and turns them around to needy, quick, to needy teens quickly. Donated bikes are always needed if anyone has any sitting in their garage. Next slide. In closing, we are very proud of the upgrades we were able to accomplish during this last year and think the public will be as well. We are looking forward to our summer session fast approaching where hopefully we will be able to start rocking and rolling again because we are READ ready. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. Um, just so the board knows, this is actually the presentation that will be shown at the city council meeting on Tuesday. We do an annual um, review with them on the programs that they support, These is specifically these two. So the team has put this together to be able to take it to them, and we just like to show it to you first. So with that, I'm sure they're available for questions. First of all, good presentation. Yes, thank you. Director Ling, please go right ahead. Yes, um, the, the way the rec staff comes together and thinks outside the box and makes programs like this happen is just phenomenal. We're very, very fortunate to have you all. Um, one of the uh, important uh, senior programs, as we all know, is bingo. And I'm noticing a couple bingo uh, events. Um, do we know, I know it's probably not under your auspices as far as the uh, revenue and so forth, but um, do we know about what percentage hit that they've uh, taken? Uh, Patty, do you know that? We've had a few um, of the car bingos, but they haven't been able to have a full bingo, the commission, in a year. So, right. I mean, what do they make in a year, Patty? No yeah, I would okay. say a couple hundred thousand dollars, yeah, probably. Last March, they had zero revenue um, for bingo. Itself. Right. So, they had yeah, so. Now, these car bingos and mm -hmm. so forth. Uh, do they make any revenue from them? They do, but it's it's minimal. They only charge them ten dollars um, a person, um, and we only limit it to uh, fifty people. Oh, sorry, to fifty people. So it's not anywhere close to what. Yeah, I... bingo would get on a Tuesday or a Friday. Um, get anywhere from a hundred to. 120 people and then on Saturday we get maybe we could get up to 140. Um, so with the only having one bingo event once a month, it only gave us, you know, 50 yeah. um, people. So, and it really wasn't um, meant for to generate mm -hmm. revenue per se. It was to provide something for the seniors to come out and enjoy Right. and to be able to get out of the house and uh, come back to the center um, and enjoy themselves. Yeah, but uh, we got to remember when all this is behind us, hopefully pretty soon, that um, they're probably going to have to put on a, a few extra bingo events uh, to make <laughs> up for their lost revenue. 
Well, you know, luckily, yeah. I mean, their lost revenue hurts, but luckily um, they have um, for many, many, many years been spending very wisely right. and haven't been spending here and there. And, you know, we've had some um, through over the years, we have had some um, commissioners that would um, want to know why we weren't spending the money because we had so much, the commission had so much in the uh, bank, why weren't they spending it? And we, they over and over again, we kept saying, you know, it's got to be safe for a rainy day. We are spending it. We're spending it. You know, we were showing them how much we were spending. We had a 10 year um, equipment replacement plan and how much we were going to need each year for the next 10 years. And we couldn't just go and spend all this money because what were we were going to do the next 10 years to replace all the equipment. And um, the majority of our commissioners um, agreed, thank goodness. And um, so we had they even though they they took a hit on revenue, they'll be fine. And they'll start up again and hopefully in July to start making revenue again. Last year and this year, uh, we have we put um, uh, a stop on our um, on what what's the in our budget? Can't think of the word. They, they call it my secret list of toys, but um, <laughs> the, um, yes. Yeah. So we didn't buy like, you know, they're so good to us. We can say we want, we need this many computers. We need a new sound system. We need a new projector system. But we didn't do that last year knowing uh, what was coming up and, and we're not doing it again this next year. So mm -hmm. while they did take a hit in revenue, we're not spending as much either. Um, so that hopefully next fiscal year, we'll be able to get back on. Thank you, Patty. Mm -hmm. Yes, Director Cusworth. So my burning question is, how did the grilled cheese contest come out? Mm -hmm. I did you roll? <laughs> so I, I'm hoping that that activity is going to continue. I was very interested. Uh, I love the Global Center. I can't wait for square dancing to come back. I know all of the square dancers are anxious too. They've probably been bugging you about that, about when they're going to come. Uh, well, I think that's out in the parking lot, correct? Yeah, yeah, I think they're they're very happy about that. Patty, you look like you're fun. Is Patty fun? I'm not she... introverted, but... <laughs> <laughs> I bet that you would be a really fun person to work with. Um, I think I'll have to start volunteering when I retire at the... Uh, Global Center, just so I can have some fun hanging out with you. I like right. to costumes. So. I don't know. We'll have to ask Mike. Mike, am I fun to work with? <laughs> I come up with all these crazy ideas, and then I say, Mike, make it happen. <laughs> so I don't know if he thinks it's fun. So that was your idea for him to have all the straw in the clothes and everything? <laughs> Actually. But he was the brains. Did you pick it? That you were going to be the brains there? Actually, with... he came up with that. All right, Mike. Yes. I, 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 uh, I pretty much let him decide what he's going to dress like. I don't tell him what he needs to do. He, he's pretty good at that. Except for any pictures of me in a tutu. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is true. I, I think the Global Center is wonderful. Um, you know, uh, it's nice, just as you were talking about, that we have a facility of this type for our county because it's continually being used for city and county things and not just for recreation for seniors. And, you know, Julie, I think that as I've gotten older and I've started hanging out with uh, older people that are actually about my age, um, <laughs> I've found that the older you get, the more interesting you become because you've had so many life experiences. And I think it's huge benefit to our city that we are keen into those life experiences for people who are so willing to share. I mean, just an incredible benefit to our city. So another wonderful thing for the Global Center and, and the uh, meals and all the things that you do are just incredible. And uh, I guess that's all I put down here, but you know, hooray for the Global Center. I'm planning to spend a lot of years there in a few mm -hmm. years. So all right. <laughs> we can't wait. I'm glad you're there. 
Well, you know, one interesting thing that's happened in the vaccination uh, clinics that we've had since January, we've noticed almost every day um, the public that's coming and as they're leaving, they are so in awe of the center and they can't believe how beautiful it is and can't believe that they didn't know anything about it. And so I think once we are finally able to open, I think we're gonna be even busier than ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's wonderful. The Teen Center also, thank you, Sarah, for all the incredible work that you do there for our young people. I think it starts, um, you know, in our communities that when young people are involved, then they're going to be better citizens. So anything that you're doing to help these young people kind of manage through life is, you know, just well, well worth the time and the effort. So thank you so much. Yes, Director Lang. Thank you, Chair Nichols. Mentioning that the uh, Senior Center, some of you may remember that years ago, prior to our uh, moving into this facility, that where we used to hold our board meetings up on stage at the uh, Global Center. Mm -hmm. So it got a lot of exposure, but uh, you know, the, the things have changed and the, what you ever uh, as a team are doing there is just phenomenal. So thank you. Director Huffer. Yeah, I want to first of all echo what Director Lang said. The, the programming that both the Teen Center and the Global Center has come up with over the past year plus uh, is just absolutely amazing. Um, and the, the fact that you've been able to keep the young people and the not so young people in our community engaged is, is absolutely, um, it, it, it's, it's really noteworthy. I did want to, I, I haven't had much exposure in the last several months to the Teen Center, but I can certainly sp speak from firsthand knowledge uh, with Patty and Mike, Julie, and all the staff at the, at the Global Center, what they have done, particularly in the last three or four months, uh, is, you know, they, they should get some kind of special commendation that in, in mid-February, when the vaccine program was just getting started and the tax program was just getting started, uh, I can't remember if it was Julie or Patty mentioned that, or maybe it was Mike mentioned that, basically, we were answering the phones for all of those other programs along with, with what you normally had to operate. And um, I know it was driving all of you just absolutely crazy, <laughs> but uh, the, the fact that you managed to get all of those phone calls answered and, and uh, responded to uh, is, is, is pretty incredible. Um, I, I did want to ask you, Patty, because uh, as, as Director Cusworth noted, you you are the shy retiring type, but I'm just wondering where you manage to store all of your costumes. Um, well, I do have a, an extra room in the house that's uh, dedicated to my costumes, yes, and my shoes. <laughs> so thank you all very much for, for what you've done for our community, it's just absolutely wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you all so much for the presentation, but for all your participation in, in doing it. And I mean, your your passion and your uh, desire has come through and all that. Uh, I couldn't help but take a few notes as I was hearing the different things coming back. First of all, uh, you know, being converted to a phone bank for multiple programs of which you were learning about on the fly, and yet, you know, continuing to serve that role and whatever was needed. I mean, it's just a, to me, just a reflection of that organization and, and your ability to adapt and just kind of run, run with it and roll with it and realize it's just, you know, part of what you're doing. And you, I mean, you're so, so adept at what you do there. And because you offer such a wide variety and serve so many people, I mean, heck, if you're dealing with teens and adults and seniors all at the same place, you got to have a special talent, you know, it just, uh, it just goes without saying. Um, but, you know, just amazing how you're kind of putting all these things together, just constantly while trying to keep things going at the same time. I mean, you mentioned the city partnership, which has been an ongoing relationship that we've enjoyed for many years there and continues to see that flourishing is incredible. And then also with the county, with the vaccine program, you know, that, that they can rely on the park district, but knowing that they've got a facility there that's up to the game, you know, and, and really ready for that. And they, no questions about that. So thank you for, again, making the district and our community look good. 
and just to realize that you can go to one place and get lunch, a vaccine, and taxes done. <laughs> you know, one-stop shop. I mean, you know, how many places can you do that? You know, uh, I know Chuck was uh, actively involved with the tax part of that as well. I saw that firsthand. But as you mentioned, you know, the outreach to the community and then coming in and seeing what that facility is all about, but probably more importantly, they were impressed by the staff, I have to say. Uh, just seeing you folks and knowing what you do and how you represent yourself. And uh, and then, of course, I you know follow on Instagram and I see the, all the live entertainment that I'm missing out on about these drive-by lunches and everything else. So, you know, that's probably worth the $3 right there is just to see the entertainment, you know. So I uh, appreciate, you know, you, Patty and Mike, especially, you know, bringing that to life and, you know, offering that little glimpse. Because I know when, when things were really clamped down and things were really tight and, the only thing people could do is drive out and get a lunch. And, and you were there providing that lifeblood for them. So I appreciate uh, your extra effort. And now just to see how that's continued. And I know all of you were involved in that to some degree because of the whole staffing issue and how that kind of unfolded and just you know being uh, uh, resourceful and making that happen. But thank you all for doing that. Um, and, and Julie, just hearing how the volunteers, you just you know, found ways to keep them involved and active because those people love to uh, keep active and to do things and it may not be the regular thing but they found something to do um, you know it's just very impressive uh, I know we've heard time and time again about the, the organization as a whole whether it's you know different centers or different programs pivoting but I would say that you know you folks were just doing that you know pivoting on a dime at a moment's notice constantly and, and just continue to be a, a jewel of the Canal Valley with with what you present over there so thank you for what you do thank you for who you are and uh, again, for making the, the, the park district look good because it's uh, you know, more than just recreation, you know, it's a social services and everything else that you do over there. So thank you so much. And we all look forward to getting back to normal or a new normal or whatever we're gonna call it. But also with what you've incorporated, I have an idea that, that there's gonna be more to normal than we ever experienced before because your creativity has been unleashed. And uh, I don't think we're gonna be holding it back. So. Thank you so much for, for the presentation, everything that you've done. Yes, Director Huffer. One other quick question for you, Patty. Um, if indeed the state uh, gets out of the, the whole tier system come mid-June, and my understanding is that the uh, vaccine program will be wrapping up at the Global Center at the end of June, uh, would I be correct in assuming that you and the staff there have all kinds of spectacular plans come the end of June and starting in July? Yeah, we're going to go on a two-week vacation to Hawaii <laughs> uh, beginning July 1st. No, we, uh, we are in the plans right now of looking over the building schedule and seeing what we can uh, bring back immediately based on social distance guidelines that we're expecting will still be in place somewhat um, after um, in July. So um, I assume uh, things are going to get better and and the guidelines are going to be less, but I think that we're, we're assuming there are still going to be guidelines for us. Um, so um, there's some programs that were, you know, like uh, Mahjong and Bridge where people are closer together normally and they're touching the same thing without, you know, sanitizing every time. There's no guidelines for that right now, but I'm sure that there will be um, hopefully by July. So right now, um, we're we're going to open up in tiers of different programming, programming that we know we can bring back. Um, our social services definitely is on our uh, high priority list because we have a room where we can have the providers come and by reservation um, and appointment only um, provide those services to the seniors um, in a room that, that they can social distance in. Um, we're um, hoping that we can actually bring back bingo in July. Um, it won't be as many people we're assuming that normally we do have, but we think we can offer it still. And our commissioners will be excited and so will our bingo players. Um, and then there's a matter of, you know, ballroom dance and um, all of our other programs. We're going to do it. Um, it's just going to be in tiers. We're not going to open the front doors on, uh, we're hoping by July 12th, we're gonna open. And then uh, we're gonna, just gonna go from there. Currently, we did open the pool room though. I don't know if you heard, I, you I saw. 
on reservation only. So that's going well. And they're very happy, our billiards players. Director Holt, I just wanted to give you the opportunity from a undisclosed location far, far away if you wanted to have any comments or any questions. You're, you're muted if you want to. Yeah, no, okay. I'm, I'm unmuted now, I think. Am I unmuted? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, well, of course, I've always been proud of everything that they're doing at, at the Gene Center, but particularly the Global Center, because I've been involved in a lot of the issues and everything. Um, and um, I just applaud them. Um, they have really rallied to the cause. And so thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and with that, I see, I think everyone has uh, had a few words again. Thank you all for being with us this evening. You're welcome to stay. You're welcome to carry on.